Okay, so we're back. Now, I want to really draw your attention to something quite important. Um, this subject was touched upon on the stream last night, but I think now that I've had some time to go over and look at things, I, I want to actually explain the versioning. So now, this particular tutorial is going to be using the Telegram bot um, library provided by um, this round robin, um, Paolo Toscan. I can't really pronounce the name. I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. Let's just say round robin for now. So if you want to uh, follow along with this tutorial, you can use this. But the version has changed. So the latest version is version 17.0.0. And um, it's the latest stable release, which I would recommend. However, um, in tandem with all the other Telegram bots, um, tutorials on the channel, I was using an earlier version, and that version was 15.7.1. And so for the sake of, of consistency, I'm going to be sticking with this particular license. Um, sorry, I'm going to be sticking with this particular um, version. Uh, and probably, most likely, in subsequent videos from this one, I'm going to be using the later versions, just so to keep up with things. But for now, this will remain consistent with other versions using the previous videos. So if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, I'm still I'm using version 15.7.1. Quite important to know. I'm going to go ahead and add the package to my pro um, project. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the packages. And um, you'll notice if you're using the same version that I'm using in this particular walkthrough that there is an update available. Um, we're not going to want to update, but for since we're dealing with UWP in this particular um, walkthrough, the front end framework is going to be UWP. C Sharp is the is the language you're using. I'm going to go ahead and update this Microsoft.NET Core package. And uh, just make sure I click that. And I'm going to. Uh, just make sure that's the one I've selected. Oh, that looks a little bit strange. But let me just hit update. Excellent. So that .NET package has been updated. So now I'm going to turn away from the NuGet solution. And we're going to work with a clean slate. I have some notes available with me, uh, courtesy of some uh, a demo project I have, just so I can keep things um, in check. So how we're going to do this, we're going to maintain things in one particular pro um, project. And I've gone ahead and called this Payments Bot app, but you can call your UWP app whatever you want. You can also follow through with a Win32 um, style application courtesy of WPF if you wish. Um, I believe the API was, is still compa is compatible across the board. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to um, create a class. In fact, um, this class will deal with all the connectivity stuff with regards to connecting to the Telegram client. So I'm going to call this tgconnect.cs. I'm going to go ahead and add that. Okay, so that's gone ahead and it's been created. I, I think I'm going to make this a public class. And uh, let's give it a constructor. Public TG Connect. So we'll deal with some of the back end uh, first, and then we'll swiftly deal with the front end because this app, this with this tutorial, uh, I don't want to just show you the syntax because it's very simple actually. It's literally just about one line of syntax to actually pass um, an invoice to the Telegram client. But what we're more concerned with here is the overall package. It's it ties in with the user experience and the kind of application that we want to tailor for ourselves to make repeating certain functionality simpler to implement than having to deal with writing the code base all the time. So we're kind of dealing with the overall bigger picture here. So without much further ado, I am just going to swiftly uh, check out my screen. And we're going to need some kind of object to store our invoices. And um, invoices refer to the transactions. And uh, it sort of encapsulates the service we're providing, um, the price and description and the name of the product um, with regards to the, with the API we're using, Telegram bots. So what I'm going to go ahead and do first, I'm going to add the namespace. It's always a good place to start. Telegram bots. And I am going to go ahead and create a private list of Telegram bot types. 
points invoice. I forgot. Uh, I forgot the accessor. And let's just invoice this. Okay. Your quick one. So here we've just created an invoice list and it stores all the invoices with regards to the session. Okay, so just gonna quickly access my notes. So now that we've done that, uh, I believe it might be a good idea if we deal with the constructor. So what I'm gonna do is not to get too ahead of ourselves so that this tutorial can kind of make sense. Uh, but what we want to do, we want to set up some events. And these events are basically going to tell the program, okay, when a message comes through, we want to do something. Um, if an update, perhaps if we want to do it like that, if an update comes through, then we want to take some kind of action. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, actually, uh, I said do the constructor, but instead I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a function called public void establish TG connection. And this particular function is going to kind of instantiate everything that we need to do with regards to sending HTTP requests and to establish the HTTP communication between the application and the Telegram client. So I'm going to go ahead and write system.net.http and we're going to call the HTTP class. We're going to rather better, we're going to construct it. And we have the, the HTTP client class. Ah, yes, there's one more thing we need to do in the field level, at least. And we're going to create a bots object. So this bots object will basically allow us to access the class known as Telegram Bot Clients, which will give us the majority of our functionality with regards to, um, <coughs> excuse me, with regards to our Telegram boting. So I'm going to go ahead and make a static, a private static Telegram Bot Client, and I'm going to call it bot. I give it a name. Access members. Between the Telegram client and the local application. Okay. for Visual Studio just to catch up. Taking a little bit of time. Sometimes my Visual Studio session may just um, knock up a little bit. Um, but anyway, let's just get back to things. So what were we doing? We, were, we are going to basically construct this bot object. So we're going to say new Telegram bot client. Now, this is where we need to access a token. So now a bot token is a unique identifier which basically identifies the bot that you've created on Telegram. We don't, the application we're dealing with here is not concerned with creating or generating bots. Bots are, bes are created natively, uh, or should I say, uh, rather via the Telegram client. And if I will leave this um, in the description, I will leave some documentation to the official Telegram API. If you're interested in making your own bots, um, you can follow the information there. It's very easy to read. It's very well written um, documentation, and you can make your own bots. And then this application is more uh, concerned with what we do with those bots, how we communicate with the bots we make. So we have to pass in a Telegram, um, excuse me, we have to pass in a bot token. So uh, we haven't created that yet. So we can just put as a placeholder, let's just say string token. And we can just say token. And then we pass our HTTP client. And we're gonna need a function that we, well, we can, now what I wanna do rather is to create the events. And I'm gonna create the events in a different functionality to kind of separate the concerns a little bit. So this is going to be called on message. On message received. I think I'll change the name. Initialize on message. I'll call it that. So I, 
I think that's what I know that's correct. <laughs> so we have a private void. Oops. That's where I stop. I'll just copy that again. It saves me right to get out. Uh, private void initialize message. And um, I'll just quickly open the body of this function. So we're going to, again, call bots. And we're going to call the start receiving function. We're going to go ahead and call bot again. And we're going to create our on message event handler. And we're going to basically call the method that we want to fire every time we receive a message. So this method we're going to make up right now. Uh, we're going to refer to it before we even make it. So we're going to call it on message. And we're going to go ahead and create the method itself. Private void on message. And uh, we just have to make sure that the um, signature of this particular bot on message matches a delegate of this particular event. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and sort out. So I'm going to have an object sender, which refers to the original object that triggered the event. And I'm going to have here a telegram bot args. Uh, message event args and we're gonna just call that e for now brilliant so this is the main <coughs> excuse me sorry about that this is the main functionality um that we're gonna be dealing with um or is the is the main function that's gonna deal with parsing um the messages of the user so that we can then respond in, in some way shape or form and in this particular demonstration what we want to do is let's say the user says i would like to access the checkout and then we can say uh okay and then we can spit out an invoice with all the credentials needed to fulfill a transaction so it's actually really simple and i'm going to show you the syntax right now so the syntax goes as follows what we want to do is we want to call it a wait keyword and since we're calling await, this has to be an asynchronous function. And then now we call bot. And then we call send invoice async. I think it is. Right there. Send invoice async. Now send invoice async is a function that uh, sends the invoice itself, but it takes quite a lot of overloads. As you can see, hopefully, on the OBS, through OBS, it's quite hard to read. I appreciate because this is quite a small box. Uh, relatively speaking, um, I can't. I, if I begin to count this now, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's over a dozen overloads. And so, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do rather, is I'm actually going to use my notes to simply just copy the overloads that I already have written. So, I'm just going to make sure that I've copied the overloads from my notes off screen. Yeah, that should be fine. And I'm just going to paste it in. So I've gone and put in the overloads. Obviously, there's going to be some errors because um, there's certain um, uh, variables that we haven't created yet. So um, I'll just run through the, the main ones for now. So we obviously want to send the message ID or rather the chat ID. And we can get the chat ID. And so the chat ID is a unique identifier between the bot and the Telegram user communicating with the bot. And uh, we can identify this via the chat ID. And so we pass the chat ID and I've passed it as an int because it accepts an int parameter. Uh, but uh, the chat ID is initially a string, I believe, or actually it's a long. So we then cast it, we can cast it to an int. And then product name, we haven't created the name of the product, which is again, another string overload. The product description we haven't gotten yet. We need to pass the Stripe life tokens or so basically, um, I'm using the Stripe um, flavor of this payment system. Um, the currency accepted with this uh, particular version of the API um, it ex it's compatible with a, a whole list of different um, middleware or should I say providers in terms of um, transactions. Don't really know the official name for it, but Stripe, you know, like Stripe, PayPal, um, Cash App, I suppose, as well. So I'm using the Stripe version. And uh, you can look at the official documentation if you want to um, kind of explore the other options, what's more suitable for you. 
So we're going to have to deal with all of this. And I guess one of the first places we can go to is item prices. So um, item prices, I think that actually refers to the list I made earlier. And I'm going to just double check that. So I'm going to double check that this is indeed a... Ah, okay. So it seems we have missed out a particular um, list that we need. We need a list of the prices, but it's under a different class. I'm just going to paste in what I have in my notes just to save time. Let's wait for Visual Studio just to catch up there. So we have a list of Telegram bot types, payments, labeled price. And this is called item prices. Uh, I guess I should call it item prices list, but it doesn't really matter for now. And I went and constructed it, uh, instantiated it at the field level. So I'll just go ahead and save that. So I think I should take care of that error. Yeah, item prices, product URI. Uh, I'm going to just double check what this wants. So a URI of the product photo for the invoice can be a photo for the uh, image of, yeah, so basically an image for the um, for the product. I I don't know if we can pass a no, because for now, I, I'm not too interested in passing a, U, a URI string for a thumbnail. But I, I do have a Dropbox with some um, URI um, images in terms of the links. But for now, what we can just do, just to save time, we can pass an empty string. So I'll go ahead up here, just paste it for my notes to save time. Put URI, um, we can populate that at a later date. So just dealing with all these overloads one by one. A lot of these overloads, you can just go ahead and put false, false, um, cancellation token, um, new. I'll just go ahead and scan through this really uh, as I'm going so that you can follow through with the overloads. Got the product URI, item prices, and this will all kind of depend on your needs as well. Your Stripe, line to Stripe token won't be the same as mine. Your bot token won't be the same as mine. Your message chat ID won't be the same as mine, but some of the general gist you understand as we go through this. So product description. Um, that's probably going to be a string that we will populate via the main user interface. And we're going to go through that in a, in a hot minute. So what we'll do just to uh, make the compiler happy, we are going to make an empty string of the same name for the, um, for the variable access string. Product description. We'll do the same for um, product name just to kind of split all this for now just so we can at least compile the project. So, I will just go ahead and grab the product name. So that should be fine. And now, so we're going to be passing the Stripe Live token. And um, when it comes to these things, security is obviously something you're going to want to be aware of, especially if you're making this application for somebody else. Uh, for the intents and purpose of uh, keeping time a little bit short uh, for this tutorial, uh, we're not going to be so concerned about the um, security, uh, but obviously uh, there will be some level of protection via using password box rather than text boxes so that people can't just see what kind of... Um, information is being passed, but we're not going to go over encryption and stuff. That's not within the scope of this particular video. So Stripe Life token for now, I'll just make it a global. So I'll just grab this. Oops. And I'll just place it here. Stripe Life token equals string dot empty. So you get the general idea. You want to pass a string to the Stripe token. So hold the Stripe token for the application. So now that we've deal we've dealt with the majority of what's going on here, let's go ahead and call the establish TG function in our constructor, and we're going to pass in a um, token. And this is going to be the bot token. And this bot token we're going to get from a different part of this uh, application, namely the user interface. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, let's go ahead, speaking of user interface, let's go ahead and deal with, with the UI. 
So I'm going to go to my main page. And I'm going to access the XAML. So let's click it now. And uh, it takes a little while to load up. So while that's happening, what I'm going to do is actually turn your attention to my website. And because on my website, I have this um, category called free XAML packs. And now what I've opted to do is some of my XAML designs, uh, I am just uh, kind of like this design, which is not available yet, but it will be in the future. Uh, I have some of my XAML designs here, and I just dish it out. You know, if anyone wants to download the uh, source code, the source XAML is right here. Um, as an example, this UWP, I called it a simple cards layout, as you can see here. We're going to kind of borrow this design. So I'm going to click on the button, the entire XAML is here. I think if, if I do Control A, I can get everything at once. Yep. Copy. And then I can just put that away. And I can see that the um, designer view is not up yet. So I'm just going to wait uh, for however long it might take uh, before, maybe just a few seconds, and then just pause it. I'm going to pause the video and pause it. I thought it might be a good idea to just kind of show this. So um, usually this happens a lot when I load the XAML designer for the first time in UWP. I get this kind of unhandled exception error. I just usually just click it to load the designer. And uh, if this doesn't, if this brings up the error again, usually just control build, uh, run the program once and it just loads up. Um, usually it's just, I think it's a cache or something it just needs to be refreshed or something like that. And we have our main window. So I don't know if it was a coincidence or not, but as soon as I started typing into the grid to get a name, it came up. So maybe I had to just kind of uh, wake up the XAML. So anyway, we're going to go and give this grid a name. I'm going to call it main grid, capital G there for grid. And what we're going to do is um, I've already copied my, as you saw, my um, XAML from the XAML pack. And uh, I'm just going to paste it straight in. I'm going to put it inside the grid. And any second now, the markup should update. So I'm just going to wait for my XAML to catch up. And boom, there it is. So we have our XAML, and uh, it's all there. So just make sure everything is somewhat consistent. Um, the grid is here. Where are the bounds of the grid? I just want to see. I'm just going to scroll up here. And in fact, it might be easier on the eyes if I animate this on a vertical split. Uh, yeah, everything's there. Okay, that's fine. And uh, let me just maybe zoom in. So we're not going to do too much here because a lot of this information we have in user interface we're not going to need per se really uh, for this example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just home in here in the header button in this, this particular stack panel with all these different elements, and I'm going to choose this button. And I'm going to give it. A, a, I'm going to change the name. I've misspelled menu, so I'm going to uh, amend that on the XAML pack. So menu button, um, let's say add, or rather not add, because we already have bots, so link bot. Uh, uh, that's the name, isn't it? It's not the content. So link bot, bot button. And for the content of this button, we're going to say link bot. So when the user clicks this button, and when I say user, I'm not referring to the Telegram user. I'm referring to us that are managing the bots. Um, I'm going to call the content of this button link bot. And um, from this button, what I want to do is actually load a content dialogue control, which will allow us to Im take um, input fields. And from these inputs within these fields, we're going to be accepting two things, the bot token and the Stripe Live token. So I'm going to add the click event. And I'm going to quickly run to my notes because I have the kind of the skeleton UI code for the content dialog, <laughs> the C sharp part of it. And I just want to draw from that actually. So I'm just going to quickly hop to that. So it's ready. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click our project. We're going to go on add and we're going to go on new item. I think a content dialogue is just a nice way to do things. So we're going to go on content dialogue. And we're going to rename it. Link bot content dialogue. .xaml. Link bot content dialogue. That looks fine. I'm going to create it. So again, this is XAML based control. 
and it should help us for um, field inputs. So now that that's loaded, as you can see, it, it consists right now of a title, um, a text box, and two buttons. I'm going to go ahead and change that because uh, we're going to want two fields, and I don't want them to be text boxes. I want them to be password boxes. Just so when we input our information, which is rather sensitive, uh, we don't want uh, any onlookers, maybe uh, people in the office, uh, people around us, to kind of see what we're typing in. So just a little extra layer of security there. So right now, off screen, uh, and just to save time, I'm going to copy and paste the markup for the XAML, just so things are a little bit more swift. So let me just see where I'm getting this from. Title, I'm gonna get it from title, and go all the way down. Just gonna wait for my Visual Studio session to stabilize here off screen, and I'm actually dragging my mouse so that I can access the copy and paste. And then right click right now. Sorry for the, for the hold up there. Okay, I'm back, and now I'm gonna go to the main screen Wait for my Visual Studio to just catch up with me. And where the title is, I'm going to just highlight it go all the way to the very bottom, and I'm going to paste in my code. And boom, here we go. We have two fields, bot token, strap life token. This is all the pre-made XAML that I've done. I've just copied it in. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you do want this content dialogue in the XAML pack, let me know. Uh, I can very easily add it in for you guys and it'll be available on my site. So um, enter the bot token here, we can enter the Stripe Life token there, and uh, these buttons should have some functionality. So what we wanna do is we have a content dialog primary button click, and we have content dialog secondary button click. So let's just go ahead and deal with the primary one first. So that's already, in, that's already there. So we're gonna go into the um, c -sharp file, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to view code, And so primary button click. What we want to do is populate this function with um, what happens when we click the button, of course. And we want to pass the field information uh, in some scope that the other part of the program can see. And um, with this, we can pass it into our Telegram, um, our Telegram Connect class. So I'm just going to quickly look for the functionality. Here we go on my notes and what I'm going to do first actually I think it's a good idea main page let's call it main page reference main page ref and declare it give it a comment here this main page ref declare a reference to the main class main page class I'm going to construct it here so it's going to be a reference to our main page, xaml.cs file. Cause new main page. And this link bot dialog is going to need the, oh, well, we're actually going to get the bot token from here. So we don't need to pass anything to the constructor just yet. But what we will pass in the constructor is a main page. So that we can have um, a reference over here. And what I'm going to do, instead of constructing a new main page, uh, I made a mistake. We're going to just pass in main page. So now we have a reference to the main page in global scope of this class. I'm going to go back to primary button, um, the, the um, event <coughs> function. Main page ref, and uh, what we're going to do from here is there's a variety of things we can do. So we have the content dialog, or rather, we have access to the fields. So if I say, let me see if it's under sender, I'm not too sure. I'm going to check. Oh, does it say content? Oh, maybe it's here. Maybe we can actually access it from here. So I'm just going to check, but well, we have password boxes, so I'm not too sure. I'm going to play around with that for now. So what we're going to do is just say this, 
And the name of my fields I've already got from Zamo. So I've got the box token password box. I've got the Stripe Live token password box. Let's start with the, um, with the bot token password box. Dot text. Or oh, sorry, it's actually password. And we're going to pass this to the main function. So we're going to say main page ref. And we're going to say bot token. And now this is a field that we haven't created yet. I'm going to go here, and again, it's not the best practice here, yeah, but I'm just laying it out quite bare so you can kind of see what's going on. So in the main, I'm going to make it public this time. Public string, and this will have to be, this is better to, this is better to be like, you know, you know, a different class somewhere, but just for the sake of time. Token string. Got empty stores the value of the bot token. Okay, so how you do the security is up to your application. Gonna go back to the link bot token dialog um, CS file. <laughs> so I pass the um, the password which holds the bot token there. I'm gonna do this for Stripe Live. I say Stripe. I'll just say Stripe token. And I'll write Stripe. Stripe Live password text box. Or password box. Oh, text block. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. Password. Stripe Live token password box. Password. Now go ahead and just create this. Oops. Public string <clears throat> stripe token string dot Yeah, there we go, that's fine. Oops. Let's make a quick comment. Okay, just gonna review the screen. I think that's okay. Gonna go back to my notes. Okay. So um, as you can see, this this whole process is somewhat involved, but uh, it doesn't take too long to get up and running once you're somewhat aware of what's going on. So once we click the button, the primary button, we pass the necessary fields into the main ref main page reference so we're going to end up here with these two values populated um, assigned rather so now what we want to do is we have on the main ui uh, a button which i created uh, already right in the xaml pack and we, this is named linkbot button click so what we want to do is actually construct our content dialog box so i could say for example maybe something like this Content dialog, actually rather, the name of our content dialog is Linkbot Content Dialog, for example. So I can go ahead and say Linkbot Content Dialog, I can say Link, oops, Linkbot Dialog, I'll give this class a name, because new Content Dialog. Uh, this is just one way of doing it, and we want to pass in this into constructor because it accepts a main page for the reference, if you remember. And then uh, once this is called, then it will construct the dialog box and then we click the dialog box once we're there at runtime, and then it will automatically cancel the dialog box so we'll have value stored that we need. So now all that's left is for us to pass the value to the TG Connect class. So I'm gonna actually go back to my main page and uh, I'm gonna select another button menu button 2, I'm going to rename it, uh, let's say uh, push uh, server, no, push server, yeah, well, I don't know that. And this is going to actually the Telegram um, connect class. And I'll just give the button the content, the text, 
for several. He's been several. <laughs> And um, I'm gonna check this with the end event. No, it should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a click event. Server underscore click. <laughs> and this is gonna create an instance of TG Connect. Again, just one of various ways to do this. And uh, if I just quickly go to this class, I wanna see if there's anything. Uh, okay, so this cause established TG connection. So we have to pass the bot token. So what we're going to do, say this bot token, we're going to pass it straight away. And so once we call this function, let's wait for, uh, we just do that to finish. It's going to come to the constructor, it's like a constructor's class, establish TG connection, pass in the bot token. It's going to establish a HTTP client. This is going to deal with most of the of the HTTP um, connectivity between our local application and Telegram. We're going to have to construct our bot object and we're calling a method that we create called uh, initialized on message, which is down here. We set up our on message event and now once, that's, that's, once this is um, instantiated, we can now receive an uh, event via user sent messages. And what do we do? We are oops, simply just sending an invoice. So if we go ahead and test this, what I want to do is add, add one extra layer, and that is some sort of validation to say, hey, um, I'm a user and I want to pay for something, a service or a product. So we can just say something like this. This is very, this is a very simple example, but uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, depending on your application and your needs, uh, it could be um, completely different. So we're going to go ahead and just access it, the message event args. We're going to go for message and uh, we're going to go for, I think it's text uh, for messages. Okay. So this will get the met the text, the reply sent by the user, the message itself. And we're going to just say if message equals checkout, <clears throat> then we send an invoice. And remember, uh, if you, you make, or actually, I wouldn't say remember because I, I didn't mention it in the first place. Uh, let me just see what's going on here. Uh, identify expected if E doesn't. That's a little strange. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to do anything there. If E message equals check out, I don't know why I'm going to get error It's kind of weird. Let me just build this. Oops. Control shield. Short of B. Anyway, uh, I've got, I lost my trailer for. So what we want to do is maybe just send a message first to the user, and then we would expect some kind of reply. And so we can do that um, um, via another method in the bot class. Um, but instead of send invoice async, it's going to be something like send message async. So I'm just going to wait for my build to finish. Okay, so um, swiftly moving on, what we're going to do is just um, um, kind of update our UI so that we can pass the name of the product and the description and some um, currency information and the price of our product. So um, in order to do this, uh, firstly, I don't know, I'm not too sure why this little squiggly is here. I think everything here is fine, um, but we'll, if anything happens, I'll just restart, pause the video and just um, do what we need to do. So we're going to go ahead back to the main page example. And we're going to make sure we have some fields to update um, the, the names or the name of the product, the description, and also the, um, you know what, let's make this really simple. Instead of doing it all here, because it we can do, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to hard code the information because that will save us a great deal of time. We don't have to worry too much about uh, the nitty gritty because um, that's not really the full point of the video so product description i'll just say this is a test description just to literally save us some time um product name in a similar vein this i'll just say test name test 
name. Okay. And we have to kind of deal with the item price and invoice list. So in order to do that, we're going to do the lists. We're going to um, populate them. So I'm just going to quickly hop to my notes. And I'm going to see how I'm dealing with that. Um, so we're going to leave this for a hot minute. So what I'm going to do, I've, I've just accessed my notes. I'm going to literally paste in the solution I'm going to deal with. I'm going to we create a function called set prices. And uh, all we do when we call this function is that we set the price um, by uh, populating the list with some information. The product name, string, and the amount. So um, just a quick note um, in that the amount has to be in pence. So ten. So let's say one pound, because uh, I live here in the UK, one pound is 100 pence, right? So we're going to pass in 100 for like one pound or something like that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and call this set price in the constructor. And I'm going to just put a product name. So I'll do something like test product title. No, let me see a name. And amount in int will be um, 1,200. Yeah, I think that's okay. Just for, the order. for, for an example. So what we're doing here, we are setting our prices. We're probably not using an uh, invoice list right now. I need to double check actually to make sure if we're using that or not. So, um, just going to check now. Okay, so we're not using invoice list for now, as far as I can tell. It's going to double check things. So, I'm looking at the overloads. Um, make sure everything's fine here. Item prices, product URI, which is an empty string. And I think we can go ahead and test things out. Go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and hit... Um, Hit local machine. I'm going to start things. Okay, so our UWP app is loading up now. I'm just going to go ahead and just move it a little bit, just a smidge. And I'll just go ahead and wait for this to load up. And uh, once it is, we are going to enter the fields and then have a test on the Telegram side of things. So hopefully, see this working. If there's any need to debug, then we'll go ahead and we will debug what we need to do. So the XAML is up now. What I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's a little bit hard to see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just move this ever so slightly. I'm going to stretch it out. This XAML. Make it just a little bigger. And uh, it's just a little bit up here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And uh, I'm not seeing the content dialog, and that is because I'm constructing, but I'm not displaying it. So what I'm going to do is quickly go to the content dialog. I'm going to just hit a break here. Um, really, I should just close the program together. I'm going to go ahead and just hit link bot. I'm going to say this dot show. Was it show async? I'm not sure. Show async. A little bit hard to see, so I'll zoom in. All right. I'll take off the break, and I'll just continue. So now we have our content dialog box showing up, as you can see. And off screen, I have my credentials. I'm going to go ahead and just place that in. It's going to make sure the password box is actually um, a password box. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to do that quickly as soon as my application um, decides to run with me. That's fine. As it was just a little bit frozen, it seems just what I said. So I'm going to go ahead and first, why don't I get my bot token? Place it in the field. I'm going to get my Stripe token and just going to copy it, literally copy and paste. And then go ahead and click link. That's all done and dusted. So now we're going to push the server. And we're just going to wait. You can see some activity. Well, it's a bit hard to see. 
because uh, I'm blocking the view, but there was some activity in, in the output window on the bottom right. I'll just, uh, even I can't see it on my side of things. I, can, I can't really touch the XAML right now because it's really um, it's still loading all the, it's pushing to the server basically. It's uploading to the Telegram the, what it needs to do. So in that moment, the application kind of locks up as it's doing what it needs to do. And here we go. So as of now, the Telegram bot should be ready. So let's jump straight to the Telegram. We got our bot up. I'm going to say hi to instantiate. And now what you want to do, you want to instantiate conversation with the bot first. Um, and then once you do that, you didn't have in place anything to any kind of response from the bot to say hi, what to the checkout. I forgot to put that in. So what I'll do is I'll quickly write checkout because I remember that's the keyword that I implemented as a validation. And hopefully it will um, bring us the widget we need for the um, payment. If not, no problem. We're going to go ahead. We're just going to go back to the program. We're going to debug and see what's going on. So I'm going to go to my um, Telegram Connect. Check out. Make sure I saw that right. I'm going to just pay it. Uh, hit a break there and i guess i will also hit a break on the uh where we'll construct oh there we go our message has been hit so if text equals shout just gonna wait for intellisense to show me what i need to see and it says text is equal to checkout so hopefully we're not getting an exception anywhere And we've gone down to the await line, send invoice async. What I'm gonna, I wanna, I'm very tempted to um, put a try catch above this, but it might just work. So I'm gonna do it right now since we're debugging. See what happens there. And that seems to have gone through. So let's go and check our Telegram session. I'm gonna get up now. Not seeing anything at the moment. And we have an unhandled exception. Bad request provider token is required. So we're going to make sure and see. Ah, uh, I, I don't think I actually passed the token to the TG Connect class. There's one token I forgot. I think it's the Stripe one. Yep. Just make sure the bot token has been passed. So without Stripe token, you won't be able to. Um, the bot token's already been passed. So we get to the stage, but I didn't pass the Stripe token. So I'm going to make sure we're constructing the TG Connect class that we are passing the Stripe token. So I'm going to go and just stop the program quickly. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put a try catch around this. Just so we can handle any, unha any exceptions. We can handle any exceptions. And we'll just show this class what I want to do. Uh, I pass a bot token. So why don't I pass in a stripe token as well? Stripe token, and um, I can simply say up here, this Stripe Live token is equal to Stripe token. So now store it in global scope a reference. All right. Um, now I'm gonna go to where I'm constructing this. So I will hit up the reference uh, for the loads. Right here, and this is on the main on the main class. I want to go ahead and add the overload, which will be the strap token, and that should be um, passed from the link bot content dialog class. Just me make sure that's actually happening. Yep, bot token strap tokens updated, and so we'll go back. And we're gonna save application and just test it out. Just test out the application. So hopefully this won't take too long to to build. And um, once that's done dusted, then we'll simply just um, re-put our information in the fields. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, I do appreciate the video may have just like literally disappeared. I just have to reset it on OBS on. 
on my mobile device. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to expand this. And uh, so you can see it a little bit easier. And I'm going to click link bot. And then bring the content dialog. I'm off screen, going to get my Stripe token first. Copy, paste that in. I'm going to now get my bot token. Telegram, Simon bot token, copy, and paste it there. Boom. I'm gonna link that up. I'm gonna push to the server. You can see the output window is flying right now because it's doing what it needs to do. A bit hard to see, but it's there. That's all done and dusted. So let's go straight to Telegram. And I'm gonna say hi first, initiate some chat. Now I'm gonna say checkout. And here we have it. We have an invoice of 12 pounds. As you can remember, I put 1,200, so that is 1,200 pence. Uh, so we have 12 pounds. And this is the subscription. If you click the widget here, it brings up um, the checkouts and stuff like that. Um, all the uh, information we need. This is the test subscription, test name. And uh, once you pay, you just simply place in your card details. I think you place your card details. I'm not too sure. I haven't really. Um, dealt with this before, but then you save your information and then of course, um, payment method, you click here, shipping address, name and address, you fill out all the fields and then you make the transaction. And that's going to be the majority of video for now. And of course, uh, if you want to actually deal with processing transactions, that's another, that's another, that's another video in its own right, how to deal with all of that, you know, how to deal with security and what if you want recurring payments? But this shows you how to make one simple one-time payment on Telegram via Telegram Bot API. Hope you enjoyed this video, found some value in it. There'll be some resources in the description and check out my XAML pack on my website if you are interested in this particular, um, just, you know, XAML template just for, you know, a quick swap on your XAML. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.